Welcome back to the intro to matinee. In this video, we are going to actually do that one thing that you might have thought matinee was specifically designed for. You might have thought this was all matinee can do, and that is the creation of a cinematic sequence. Wow, it's like, finally, we're getting to make a movie. <laughs> exactly right. Now, in this particular example, we are going to be creating the simplest of <laughs> matinee sequences. This is not going to be anything too uh, overblown, but we are going to have multiple cameras. Oh, but it's enough to get the creative juices flowing. Like you just said, we're going to have multiple cameras, we're going to have camera cuts, we're going to have fading up, fading out. There's going to be a lot going and on. We're going to be zooming cameras, yeah. moving cameras, all sorts of really cool stuff, but in the grand scheme of things, this is going to be fairly simple. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so, uh, let's start off with the tools that we need. The first thing we need if we're going to have uh, a, a movie is we need a camera. Okay. We can't just rely on the player's perspective all the time. So what we're going to do is open up the Actor Classes browser, and we can see the camera actor right up near the top, so let's close the browser. And I'm going to place one camera here in our initial room, and I'll immediately fly through the wall and drop our other camera in the other room. Because I, I know just right off the bat, I want a camera in each room. Now, what the cameras are doing, I'll figure that out as we go. Okay. So, to position these cameras, you know, you could come in here and rotate these by hand, but that's never any fun, and I don't recommend you try to do it. It's much easier to use the Lock Selected Actors to the Camera button, and then we click on this camera, and now we're looking through the camera. And not only that, any motion that we make to the viewport will be translated to this camera. Of course, you need to be very careful when you're using this feature, because it is easy to... Well, keep it locked and not realize it, and yeah. once you get it lined up, then accidentally move it. Yeah, when you're done, turn it off. That's, uh, right. that's what it boils down to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put us really tight up on this doorway, because we're going to discover that while this doorway, you know, it, if this door was in the real world, we might think that an average person might come to about here on it. We're going to find that our player is very, very short. This is a huge door. Well, the bottom line is when creating levels, generally the levels are a bit larger than what it would be in reality. Larger than life. Well, for the simple fact, with the way things look through your viewport when you're running around inside of Unreal Tournament, it feels right. Even with this, with all examples we've seen going back in mm -hmm. here and testing out the level we've been putting together, it feels right. Right. But now when we actually look at the player, it's not going to feel so right. Yeah, he, he's going to feel pretty tiny, but that's not really a problem. Just no. something you need to take into account as the director. That's right. So what I'm going to do is make sure we are focused up down toward the bottom of the door because that's really where the player is going to be sitting. So I think that's a good initial position. Just as a side note, the first thing you want to do when you're setting up cameras for a cinematic sequence is get that initial position locked down. Uh, and that is because as you start to animate cameras, you will find that sometimes changing that initial position can be a little bit tricky. It's just something I've noticed anyway. So uh, we'll get the... I think this looks pretty good for our initial mm -hmm. shot. The next thing I'm going to do is turn off the Lock to Selected Actors button. And now as I pull back, we'll see the camera is positioned right where I want it to be. So now let's fly over to the other room. We'll reactivate Lock to Selected Actors and grab this new camera... And we'll rotate around. I think I'm going to keep this one really close to the ground, get that worm's eye view effect. But notice we're a lot further back, and I'm going to put the door over here kind of uh, in the corner of the scene. Okay. So this is where we're going to begin. And what we're going to do is rotate to look down at the door, to look at the, uh, the player sitting there, and then we'll zoom in on him while we're doing that. So, you know, again, a fairly simple effect, but enough to really get things going and help you see where to go from here. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and switch off Lock to Selected Actors, and now both of our cameras are in position, and we're set to go. So let's pop into Kismet, which is already open, and that's the uh, umpteenth time I've done that in my <laughs> life. Now, I'm going to create an entirely new matinee sequence for my cinematic sequence. I'm not going to make it a part of any well, existing Well, it doesn't sequence. really make a lot of sense to add it into the door sequence or the light dimmer sequence. Exactly. Or well, I can't think of a good reason to anyway. So let's uh, right-click here in an open area of Kismet. I'm going to create an all-new matinee. And just to alleviate any confusion I might have in the next few minutes, we'll actually put an object comment for cinematic sequence. So now I can see that whenever we come in here. All right, now, first thing, I'm going to double-click my matinee sequence to pop up the matinee editor, which appeared down here. We just need to expand that out. That happens sometimes. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of Kismet, though. We don't really need to see it. I'm also going to hide the curve editor. Now, when I am creating a cinematic sequence, the very first thing I like to do is to bring groups in for my cameras so that all my cameras are here and I'm ready to use them. Now, I'm going to start off with camera one, which is not the one that's in the floor. 
He's the one that's hiding over here. Now, guys, I have very limited amount of screen space, so please bear with me as I try to make the most of it. So I'm going to select my first camera. I'm going to right-click in my group track list, and we could create an empty group, and we could, you know, it would assign the camera to it, and we could give it a name like camera one, but we do have access to a camera group. Now, before I click on this, I want to let you know, this group is nothing special. It is not a special group that is built just for cameras. And when I create it, it's going to ask for a name, so we'll call this camera one. All it is is a plain Jane common group that automatically comes in with a movement and FOV angle track. It is just there as a matter of convenience and for no other purpose. Speeds you up a little bit. And gets a key set on that movement track. Absolutely. Well. Very nice and very, uh, very convenient. But this particular camera, I'm not planning on animating an FOV angle, so the very first thing I'm going to do is delete out the FOV angle track. Okay. FOV allows us to zoom. We're actually going to use that on camera two. So let's fly into the other room, and here's our other camera. We will select that, right-click, add a new camera group, and we'll call this one naturally Camera 2. And this one we will use movement and FOV angle. Now with this, we are ready to rock. So the very first thing we need to do is set up Camera 1. Now in general, what I have in mind is an animation in which we'll start off with a couple of seconds of motion on camera one where we're looking at the player, maybe tracking off to the right and you know, kind of keeping the, ca the player in view. Then we're going to switch over to camera two, and we're going to spend a couple of seconds rotating toward the player and zooming in on him at the same time, then hold there for a few seconds, and then fade back out to black, and that'll be it. So lots of stuff we have planned, as simple as this sounds, but it does make me consider the amount of time we want our animation to take place. So what I'm going to do is set this to around 7 seconds, and that's just uh, because, you know, adding it up in my head. I want a couple of seconds here, I want a couple of seconds there, I need a few seconds of holding. And I like to overshoot and then pull back in if I need to. So we'll just start off with a flat 7 seconds for what I have uh, planned out. Now let's begin with just camera 1 and its motion. Now here's the catch. We see camera one, and that's just fine, but we don't really know what camera one is looking at. We, we do get this nice cone, and it's very handy to allow us to see the general direction camera one is looking at, but to know what it sees is something else entirely. Notice on each uh, group, we have this little tiny camera icon. If I click on this, we are now looking through this camera, which is super useful for us. We already have our initial key in our movement track, so let's go ahead and put focus on our movement track. I'm also going to take my section and highlight the first two seconds of our uh, playback. And I'll scrub us forward to about two seconds in. We're really, really close to it, and I'll press enter. Now, that does pop us straight over to two seconds. Good because, old snapping. Yeah, because I got snapping on. i, I got to love that snapping. Now, it says we're ready to adjust key one, so the cool thing is all we need to do now, because we're looking through this camera, is move the view to the next position we want. So I'm going to hold down left and right mouse, and we'll track off to the right, and then with just left mouse, I'll turn us back in a little bit, back toward the player. Maybe that's a little much. Maybe we'll pull that back in just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So something kind of like that. Now, we can play back through and get an idea of that motion, and because I set up my uh, loop section, we can play a loop. And, you know, of course, you could tweak that until you know, you're satisfied with what you see. I think that's going to work. At That'll least work. Yeah. Yeah, for this example, I think that's going to work out fantastically. So we'll go ahead and hit stop, and we're done with that. Now we need to worry about what camera two is doing. So I'm going to click on my little camera icon next to camera two, and notice that camera one immediately switches off, and we're now looking through camera two. You can only look through one camera at a time. So now I'm going to start the animation for camera two as soon as we're done with camera one. So my very first order of business will be to take our first keyframe for camera two, hold down control, and drag that over here to the two second mark because that's where I want to begin our animation. And I'm going to go up about another two and a half seconds, give or take, mm -hmm. and we will press enter to create a new keyframe. And now it says adjust key one, so uh, let's go ahead and get matinee as much out of the way as we can. And I'm going to rotate our camera so that we are looking down close to the bottom of the door. Again, our character is only going to come to about here. So we'll look as close as we can. We can always adjust it later if we want to, but I think that's going to work. And once again, we might want to play this back to get an idea of the motion. So let's start off by adjusting our loop section uh, to those next few seconds. And we'll start looping, and let's just get uh, matinee out of the way. I think that's going to work. Mm -hmm. And, of course, if it, if it uh, turns out that it doesn't work, we can always adjust it later. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and hit stop. The next thing I want to do is animate the field of view angle of our camera, thereby zooming the camera in toward our player. I'm going to begin the zoom actually during the motion, so we're overlapping some, uh, some animation here. We'll start off toward the end of the motion. I'm going to jump down to our FOV angle track and press enter. Now, if I right-click on this key, I can go to set value, and you can see that the default value is set to 90 degrees. That is your default camera angle. That's what you typically see when you're looking through any camera, including the perspective. So uh, we'll go ahead and click cancel. We don't want to change that. Let's uh, come all the way to the end of our animation. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be the end. Let's say just a few seconds later, maybe up to five and three. Quarters. Yeah, we don't want it to take too long of a zoom. A little bit faster would look a little cooler. Oh, you could do that uh, that kind of Zoic Studios effect That's right. where you, know, you zoom really, really quick. And, in fact, if you want to do that, you can you know, zoom out and then maybe bring in a depth of field. And Well, anyways, that, that may be going a little bit overboard. Yeah, right there. So uh, let's say right after we get done with our motion and we will press Enter again, right-click, and we'll go back to Set Value, and we'll set this down to 45 and press Enter. Now, 45, that is a lower angle, which means that less of the uh, actual field of view is in view, so you're zooming. You're effectively zooming at that point. Now let's play back through this. Let's go ahead and also adjust our section loop as well. I don't think we're picking up the very end of it. Probably not. No, you're right. So let's pull this out. We'll actually get a, a little bit of a hold in there too. So that's pretty good. Um, I think we might be, we might have turned a little too far. Okay. So I'm going to pull our camera back a little bit. So what I'm going to do is stop. Let's go back to our movement that's track. Being picky. How about this? Just add a little bit of extra motion here, a little bit okay. later on, where you kind of Realign it. it. Start kind of pull it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah. All right. So we'll, I'll put this all the way at the end so we get some constant motion throughout. Okay. Now, you know, if this was something hardcore that I was going to spend a lot of time on, I would spend a lot more time worrying about what the camera's looking at. But just keep in mind, this is more of an example than anything else. So uh, we have the movement track selected. Let's press Enter to add a key, and we'll just kind of rotate this kind of back into place to realign it. Okay, now let's test that out. Whoa, we look down at the floor. Yeah, a little bit of overshoot in there because of the interpolation, because of our curves. That's right. Now, you say overshoot, but we need to show people what overshoot is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to a window and show our properties, because there's an interesting thing you might not know about movement tracks. By default, they only show translation. All right. Before you even click on that, let's go ahead and bring our curve editor up. Okay. So we can show there's no overshoot in there at the moment. Well, I, hang on. I yeah, really got to add it in. Clever with screen space for just a second. So <laughs> let's go ahead and bring in the movement track. There we go. And we can frame shoot, it all up. Frame it all up. And it is framed up. Okay. Everything's dead because we're not moving the camera at all. So if you take a look in here and you notice that there's no motion and you start to get scared, it's because by default, all we're showing is translation curves. We don't really need translation curves because we're not moving the object. We need to show rotation curves. Aha. Uh -huh. And now we have all sorts of stuff. And you can see that overshoot. And the overshoot takes place when the uh, editor tries to keep the curves nice and smooth. And it means that, you know, we're rotating to this point along our animation. But as soon as we get there, because it's trying to keep those curves nice and smooth, we end up going way beyond that and then coming back to our next curve. That's a bit problematic. And the easy way to fix that is to just click on the flatten tangents to access. Bink. And that narrows that down. Now, that means we are going to slow our rotation down as we get to this point and hold there for just a fraction of a second before we start to do our kind of compensation. But I think that's going to work out okay. Let's go ahead and uh, close this. Uh, you sure I you want to close it? I didn't it? mean to close it. <laughs> I was going to hit maximize, and my brain was like, no! But uh, with it open... We close the curve editor portion of it. Yeah. We, there we there go. There we go. And now we have access to all the things we need. So let's go ahead and loop the section again. And we're not looking through the camera. So let's make sure that we do switch over to camera two. So down. Much better. Not there we down go. through the floor. And I still might want to adjust the, that one key a little bit. Because it looks like we're looking a little bit too far to the left. But that's okay. I mean, that does allow us to show how to edit a quick key. So uh, let me stop our playback. We can click on this curve, and notice it just says adjust key one, so I can just come over here and right mouse, pull us back just a little bit, and that fixed it. So now we're looking in an entirely new direction. And, of course, we've got to be careful with any adjustments that that may have caused to our tangents as well. Which, yeah, we do have to go flatten those back out. So let's go ahead and grab these, flatten them back out to the axis, and there we go. And then we can play back through that. Did I close that again? You did. I'm telling you, I'm getting all excited. It's just that this is so cool, and I just want to play through it. So, boom, and we need to make sure we're looking through our camera, and we don't have enough screen space to do that. So let's make sure we look through camera two. 
much better. Yeah, I'm liking that a whole lot better. Now, here's the catch. The very first catch is that uh, we have these two cameras in place, but we have no system currently by which to decide which camera we're going to look through and when. In order to do that, we need a new kind of, uh, of group and track altogether, and that is the director group. So what I'm going to do is right-click here in my group uh, track list, and you'll see add new director group. And here's the cool thing. You can only have one director group in a matinee sequence. Yeah, could you imagine trying to have multiple directors directing a movie? They do it sometimes. Yeah, they do. I hear it's fun. Yeah, I've heard it's pretty messy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, here's something interesting, though. Notice the director group has effectively split our window in half. It gets its own section. So just to let you know, the director is very special. He gets his own trailer and all that sort of thing. <laughs> so uh, we have a director group and the director track. And the director track allows us to control camera cuts. That's his whole purpose. And it's very, very easy to use. In fact, it's almost frighteningly easy to use. Let me go ahead and take our fit loop sequence button. We're going to click that to get everything all nice and fit within our... All seven seconds of it. Exactly. Now, we'll start off here in the director track at the very beginning. I'm going to make sure we have rewound all the way. I'm going to press enter, and all it does is say, cut to what group? Well, we want to cut to camera one. This is just going to show you the list of groups that you have. So that's why you want to set up these groups first thing. And this is really excellent in demonstrating how setting a key really does mean different things when you're working with different types of groups and tracks. It does indeed. So let's go ahead and press camera one and click OK. And there we go. So now we can see that camera one not only has a keyframe, but it has this nice blue bar, which runs all the way across our animation. Now what I want to do is create a cut. And I want this cut to be right at two seconds. So what I'm going to do is click on this key, which will jump my time slider to the two-second mark. And then I'll put focus back on the director track. And I'll press enter again to create a new key. And we'll set this to camera two and press enter. And now we get an entirely new color-coded bar indicating that we have a different camera we're looking through now. And here's where it gets really cool. Notice we have a little camera icon next to the director group. We can click on this, rewind our animation. Let's make sure we are looking through that guy. Let's hit play. And we'll play through one camera and then switch to the other. And let me try to get matinee out of the way as best I can. So let's uh, let, wait for that to cycle, because it's going to take a few seconds. Oh, it only played through once because I didn't click loop. There we go. So now we get to see the result of all our cuts, and now would typically be a good time to go in and start making edits and things like that. But we're not done yet. Oh, no. The next thing I want to do is create a fade-in and a fade-out effect. Now, I'm going to take my, uh, my sequence here, and we're going to zoom out of it just a little bit so I can see everything. And the very first thing we need to do to create a fade is to create a fade track. Now, a fade track is something special that you can only apply to a director group. So I'm going to right-click up here inside my director group listing, and you'll notice that, uh, well, I'm sorry, I need to uh, right-click directly on the director group. You'll notice we have four new tracks that we can only add uh, directly to uh, a director group. These can't be added to anything else. So let's go ahead and add a fade track, and it pops in right here. You saw me. I was looking at that slow-mo. Yeah, I Point know. time. Baby. I know. And I, it's like we're not doing anything near interesting I enough to, to warrant it, <laughs> but that is a pretty cool track to play with. They also have color scale. You can multiply all of your colors by, uh, by other colors to really change the, uh, the hue, the overall tone mm -hmm. of your uh, cinematic sequence. All kinds, of, all kinds of really cool stuff you can do. But let's just start simple with a fade. And so uh, here we need a key for this, so let's put focus on the fade track. At the very beginning, I will press Enter, and that drops a key. If you right-click, you can go to Set Value, and by default, your first value is going to be zero. That is the amount of fade out. So there's no fade out. No fade. So we're going to start off by setting this to a value of one, which is going to leave our sequence at black. Now let's go in about, say, half a second. No, maybe half a second is too much for a fade in. We want this to go fairly quickly. So I've got it to about 0.327, which should go, I think, around to 0.3. So we'll add a new uh, key, right-click, and it automatically set the value to, oh, and make sure it set it to zero. But I like to check everything. But we can see everything got bright again. So as I scrub, whoop. Nice. The, li the lights fade in on us. And it might not be a bad idea, you know, if you're really picky about your sequences to loop through that and see how quick that's coming in, see if that's what you're looking for. You, I don't know, maybe you want your fade in to take a little bit longer. So we could just grab that key, drag it maybe a couple of notches over. <laughs> I like how everything dimmed for us. <laughs> there you go. It's a little softer. Okay. 
Okay, now we just need to fade back out, and I'm going to fade out a little more grass. Let's do a full one second fade. Okay. Just for the fun of it. So we'll come over here to six seconds, and we'll press enter, and we know the value is already set to one, but if you wanted to check it, you could confirm. I'm sorry, it said zero. We have no fade. I always get it reversed in my head. That's okay. All right, so now let's go ahead and drag all the way to the end of the animation. We'll press enter, and now we need to fade this completely out, so we'll right-click, set value, and I'll set this all the way up to 1, press enter, and we can scrub back through. Or, of course, you could, again, take your sequence and drag it over here. Oh, wrong guy. And then just loop through this a couple of times just to confirm you're fading out the way you want to. Nice. And with that, we are pretty much set to go as far as the animation of our cinematic sequence is concerned. Now, there are all sorts of other things you could potentially animate, and it's so much more than cameras. There could be pawns that you've brought in, and you could add movement tracks to them and then add animations to them as well to make uh, characters move around. You could uh, have animated elements such as you know cars driving through the scene. There's Particles, so explosions, the list oh, goes yeah. on. Oh, yeah, there's so many things you could do, and this is the simplest example in the world, but uh, let's take one more time. Let's uh, fit our sequence to our entire loop, and let's play through it one last time so we can catch the whole thing with our fades in place. And then we fade out. Nice. So there we are. And that's going to take care of the lecture for this video. Now, in the next video, we're going to show how we can actually turn this into an effective cinematic sequence that will work in our level.